Google has just announced the Gemini Code Assist globally for free for developers to try it out. And this sounds amazing. And in this video, I'm going to cover how to set it up. And this is the first look at it. So there's almost nothing edited. So let's have a look at the video first. All right, so we're gonna try out whatever Google said, how helpful this is. We're going to try to integrate that in VS Code as well. So this is the blog article that you can also see from the same tweet. So you can click and basically reach here. And if I go a bit down, this is where a lot of information can be read. I'm mostly interested in actually trying it out in VS Code. So I'm gonna click this link. And here you can see that we have this particular extension that we can try out. So if I click uh, install here, and if I try to click continue, this is going to open VS Code. And this opened in VS Code for me, but I want to open that in cursor. So I'm going to actually go to this particular code base. And inside here, I'm going to go and extensions. And you can do the same thing with VS Code as well. So if I go with Gemini or Google.Gemini Code Assist, I can see this one and I can install this just like this. And let's have a look at how we can try this out. So here you can see on the left, we can give this some prompt and then it uh, will basically react on the actions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to see how to set it up. So here, if I scroll down, I don't see much documentation, but if I go to extensions here i should be able to either find it here which i can't so what i'm going to do is i'm going to press Control shift p and you can also try command shift p if you're on mac os and here if i say gemini code assist so here you can see quick chat accept decline blah 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 so what i can try to find is how can i start so here view show gemini code assist so here we have the chat right now i have to sign in google that i didn't know but i would assume that's how it works so logging to gemini code assist make sure to add accounts.google.com to trusted domain by clicking configure trusted domain page in the pop-up okay that makes sense so here i can see that this is the pop-up that we have so i go and say configure trusted domains and here we add accounts.google.com just like this and now i can log in with my email sign in and now i have authorized it so it accesses my account now i go back here and you can see that it is loading right here and this may take a few moments so let's wait awesome terms and condition and privacy policy something that we as developers always read i'm gonna dismiss it like a good developer and then how how do I use Gemini code assist or I can try uh, with some prompt. So if I say add the rate here, it essentially allows me to add files. And this is the same experience that we have in Klein, for example. But what I want to do is to improve my distribution application for all of my Angular projects for this book. And I can show you it right here. If I go to github.com slash SNIRs, I can go down and go to my books page. And here we have a deployment right here. If I click it, I show all of my projects of my applications just like this. For example, if I go with route animations just like this i can open final and this is my final application for route animations in angular so i want to improve my index page which essentially has both of the links for example this one so i want to do two things one i want to improve how this looks and i also want to improve that whenever i click a particular link instead of opening it right in this tab it opens that in a new tab so let's fix those two things all right so i lost the gemini chat so i'm going to open it again so view gemini code assist and here i'm going to actually say that we have this application in in this and it should be in this apps and then the index html so this dash apps so here you see we have the index html here and then the apps.json so i want to add it here and i'm gonna say i want to make the applications look better use a list or a table layout that's what i'm going to say and whenever we click start or final link open it in a new tab now trust me when i say this i know this is not something really really complex that measures how crazy Gemini code assist can do but I'm starting with a simple example and see even if it does simple stuff as I would expect it to do if I hit play let's see what happens so now it says Gemini code assist is working and now it says to improve the presentation open links in the new tabs modify the JavaScript section of your index HTML so here it essentially has given me the whole JavaScript that can make it work but I have to go inside my code and actually do that I was assuming that this would apply the changes somehow does it it gives a few options it says open in a 
new file, diff with open file, insert in current file, and then copy to clipboard. And here at the bottom, you can also see that we are essentially having this as context sources. Another important thing here is that it uses Tailwind CSS classes for better styling. Because the HTML already includes Tailwind CSS, it understands that and essentially uses that. So if I go to this tab, index HTML, at the very top, you're going to see that we are using the Tailwind CSS here using the CDN and it automatically understands that. Good stuff. Now, if I try to go and replace this whole fetch thingy, it should be able to uh, make things better. So I'm going to actually remove this and then I'm going to do control shift P show Gemini code assist. One of the things that I don't really like is that I have to let it go sometimes, but maybe I can move it somewhere. I don't know. Maybe if that's an option. Anyways, I'm going to say insert in the current file like this. And you can see that it shows me that this is what's going to happen when I do this, which is still good. So if I do this, now I have this. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go here and run npx HTTP server and this dash apps. And let's see if this renders correctly. All right. So if I control click this one, so going to the browser, it doesn't seem like this works as intended. So if I go and inspect it, I go to console here, it says sorted chapters is not defined. Interesting. I go back here. I try to find sorted chapters. So here uh, is what I missed rest of your existing code to organize apps by chapters, blah, blah, blah. So that means I accidentally removed my code. This is something that probably code assist should have provided, but it didn't, unfortunately. So if I go back and revert my code, I want to now see what did Gemini suggested. And this is one of those moments where as a developer, you should understand that you should not be copy pasting directly from any AI tool. So I'm going to actually have to do all of this manually, which doesn't really make sense, but I'm still going to do it. So here I'm actually sorting by chapters. And this is where we have the const table equals to document create table and object dot entry sorted chapters. So essentially here is where I am going to do all of what was said here. So I'm going to cut all of this and then paste it and then save it. And now if I go to my browser and refresh, this looks a bit better than what we had before. If I go here, click this, this is how it looked before. This is how it looks now. I won't say this is perfect, but I think this is still much, much better than what we had before. It doesn't have some cool transitions or whatnot, but if I click start, it opens this into a new tab, which kind of makes sense. And if I open this, it also does it as well. Now, these links don't really exist on my local. These are only available on deployment, but I think still it's better than nothing. But what if I wanted to tell it to really give something that is fancy and, you know, something like Angular's homepage. Let's try that. Now I'm giving it the prompt that update it like the Angular dev website with a mix of purple, blue and red gradients, fancy transitions, nicer button links, and maybe SVG icons as well. Notice that I'm saying here, show me what you got, but most importantly, give me the whole code. I don't want half of the code to basically guess, you know, what I should do. So I will say whole code of the HTML just to be precise. So if I send it, let's see what happens. All right. So now we have got in the whole code. So if I scroll down, you can see this is the whole HTML and it also has given reasons for what changed and you know, what are the basic differences, but just like the super desperate developer, I'm just going to copy it and replace it, save it. And now if I go here and refresh, let's see what happens. Ooh, this is interesting. So we've got in some sort of gradient that goes from blue to somewhat purple somewhere. And if I go here, this is actually pretty nice. Oh, it changes colors. What? This is amazing. All right. So if I go up, you see the colors are changing as well. And if I go final, it opens in another one, start another one. I think this is still much better than before. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a header here that has the Angular cookbook as a heading. It also has the link to the GitHub repository and also where to buy it on Amazon. So I'm going to ask that. All right. So I have a prompt here that says add a header or toolbar, which says Angular cookbook second edition has two buttons on the right in the header, one for GitHub repo and one for Amazon link to buy it. Read the readme for the links. And this readme essentially is the top level readme, which has the links as well. So if I go here, if I try to go to readme.md, this should essentially have the link to Amazon and also to the GitHub repository as well. If not, it's going to try to figure it out itself. I'm also going to add package.json, which essentially could contain the GitHub repo as well. So let's give it a go. All right. So it gave us the answer now. And if I scroll down, you will notice something interesting. So here we don't have the whole code still, even though I told it last time to give me the full code. So I'm going to ask it again. Give me the full code. Always don't forget. And since it has a huge context window, I would assume that this instruction would still be there because usually what happens with these AI tools is that you, whenever you send a new message, the history also goes with it. So let's see. All right. So if I scroll down now, I should have the full code as you can see. So I'm going to go up and I'm also going to copy this, paste this, and let's try this again. I'm going to go here, refresh now, and you can see at the top, we have this header, we have a GitHub repo, and it 
it takes us to the GitHub repo. So it picked the correct link and buy on Amazon also takes us to the right link. So it automatically reads it. And there we go. You can see that even though this is not perfect or per my liking, this is still is better than what I had before. And it works and it provides value. And I could do that in a just a fraction of time compared to if I had to do it myself. So we have the right links. We have the link to Amazon. We have much better UI. And the meaning of code assistance is to assist you with the code. It's not there to do your job. So it's really important to draw the line where you want to completely rely on the AI tool versus taking help from it and then understanding what the code really does. So this is really important. And for me, in this particular sense, I think it works as expected. I've tried a few things as well. I may want to test it out myself with all the links as well, especially when you're liable for what you're doing. If it's my passion project, I might not care a lot. But if it's something that I'm going to be held accountable for, I have to test what I'm doing. With that said, I hope this video was helpful. It taught you something. It gave you an early preview of what Google Gemini Code Assist does. And if it did, press the thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And as always, happy coding. I'm going to see you next time.